Imagine this, a time when Earth was ruled by creatures that weren't even human yet. No cities, no written language, not even fire. And yet, these distant ancestors, living over three million years ago, figured out how to craft and use tools. These weren't just sticks or rocks picked off the ground. These were intentionally shaped instruments, marking the very first signs of technological innovation. And here's the kicker. They existed before humans even evolved. Let that sink in. In Kenya, archaeologists unearthed stone tools that date back an astonishing 3.3 million years, older than the genus Homo, which includes modern humans. This discovery completely shook what we thought we knew about evolution. If humans didn't make these tools, then who or what did? And how does this discovery rewrite the history of intelligence on Earth? Let's dive into this mind-blowing mystery. For decades, scientists believed that toolmaking was exclusive to the Homo genus, our evolutionary group that includes species like Homo habilis and Homo sapiens. But this find in Kenya's Turkana Basin flipped that narrative on its head. These tools predate Homo habilis by hundreds of thousands of years. In fact, they predate Homo entirely. The tools were found near Lake Turkana in 2011, but their significance wasn't understood until later. They aren't just random pieces of chipped rock. They show clear signs of deliberate shaping, edges sharpened to cut, pound, or scrape. It's the kind of innovation we thought only Homo was capable of. But the age of these tools tells us a different story. So who made them? The suspects include species like Australopithecus afarensis, yes, Lucy's species, or even Kenyanthropus platyops, a lesser known ancestor. The big question is, how did these species, with their smaller brains and simpler lives, figure out how to manipulate the world around them in such a complex way? The tools raise a crucial problem for scientists. How do we redefine intelligence and innovation in evolution? The conventional thinking was that larger brains directly led to technological advancements. But Australopithecus afarensis, the leading suspect for these tools, had a brain about the size of a chimpanzee's. That's less than a third of the size of ours. And it's not just about brain size. These early ancestors didn't live in big social groups like humans. They didn't communicate with complex languages. So how did they share and refine this knowledge of toolmaking? Did they pass it down from generation to generation? Or did multiple individuals discover this skill independently? Adding to the mystery is the complexity of the tools. These aren't just cracked rocks. They show intentional hits to create sharp edges, an understanding of cause and effect. That's problem solving on a level we didn't think was possible for species so ancient. Let's take a closer look at the tools themselves. Known as Lomequian tools, they include anvils, hammers, and flakes. Anvils are large stones used as a base for shaping smaller rocks. Hammers were likely used to chip off flakes from larger stones, creating sharp edges. And those flakes? They were the original knives, perfect for cutting through animal hide or slicing tough plants. What's fascinating is the way these tools were made. The creators understood the properties of different stones. Some rocks are harder and better for shaping. Others are brittle and ideal for creating sharp edges. This suggests not just trial and error, but actual planning. Now let's talk about the possible toolmakers. First up, Australopithecus afarensis. This species is famous for Lucy, whose fossilized remains were discovered in 1974. Australopithecus afarensis walked upright but still had many ape-like features. Could Lucy's relatives have been the first engineers? Another contender is Kenyanthropus platyops, a species that lived around the same time. We know very little about Kenyanthropus, but its flatter face and dental structure suggest it was different from other ancestors. If it wasn't Lucy's kind making tools, maybe Kenyanthropus deserves the credit. And there's a wildcard theory. What if multiple species made tools independently? Evolution isn't a straight line, it's a tangled web. Maybe tool making wasn't a single invention, but a skill that popped up in different groups, depending on their environment and needs. Here's where it gets even more interesting. These tools weren't just groundbreaking for their time. They set the stage for everything that followed. From these simple stone tools to the smartphones in your pocket today, it all started with one critical leap. Realizing that objects could be shaped to serve a purpose. This discovery also challenges how we see intelligence. It's easy to think of intelligence as something tied to humans and our big brains, but these ancient toolmakers prove otherwise. Intelligence, it seems, is more about adaptability and creativity than just brain size. And let's not forget the context. 
Three million years ago, Earth was a wild, untamed place. These early ancestors lived in a dangerous world full of predators, with no weapons, no shelters, and no fire. The fact that they developed tools in such conditions speaks to their ingenuity and survival instincts. The discovery of 3.3 million-year-old tools is more than just an archaeological find. It's a window into the minds of our distant relatives, a reminder that innovation isn't exclusive to humans. These tools bridge the gap between instinct and intellect, showing us that even with limited resources, our ancestors were problem solvers, innovators, and survivors. As we uncover more about these ancient toolmakers, we're rewriting the story of human evolution, adding new chapters that celebrate the creativity of species long forgotten.